So in this video, we're going to walk through this tutorial on Azure OpenAI and embeddings and document search. So let's go through. So one, we do have Python installed already, and we also have uh, JupyterLab installed. That's the only thing really we've done so far in advance of this. I do have an Azure subscription and also to use Azure OpenAI, this is still limited, but you still have to request access to use the service itself. Um, so if you haven't done that yet, you won't be able to proceed. But now we're going to go and we will go and create our resource. So we need OpenAI resource with tech search doco one and tech search query 001. So we're now going to create an Azure OpenAI resource. We'll create a new resource group. We're going to change it to West Europe because East US does not currently have the models we need for this tutorial. And, and we'll name our resource that and we'll select standard SO for this one. Review and create. And we'll click create. All right, let's go to our resource. And we'll go to model deployments because we need to add these two models here. Say create. I'm going to name my model the same thing as what the actual underlying is named. And so we'll look and find. So we want text search curie 001. Touch search do, query doc 001. There we go. And we'll say save. And we've submitted that for deployment. And then we'll submit our other deployment as well. We want text search curie query 001. There we are. And we'll click save. And so both these deployed, we have our two models, so we can move on. We're also going to need these Python libraries, so OpenAI, num to words Matplotlib, Plotly, SciPy, Scikit-Learn, Transformers. If you note right here, we have this note on that there are certain prerequisites uh, for the Hugging Face Transformers library. Essentially what this is, is that generally you have transformers installed with PyTorch or with um, other tools, and we can show you this quickly. So usually it would be PyTorch, TensorFlow, or Flax. In how we're using it in this tutorial, that's not actually the case. We don't need that. We don't need all of that. All we're using transformers for is for its tokenization capabilities. And then we're relying on GPT-3 with Azure OpenAI for anything else that we're doing with our two models here. I'll launch the command prompt just to show you what would happen if you tried to do a pip install of transformers without some of the prereqs. But so we can kind of go halfway and we won't do PyTorch, but we can usually what we'll fail on if we have this kind of very basic setup that I have on this machine is that, and so it's saying it's failing to build the wheel. Ultimately what it is, is we need a Rust compiler. So it's right here that is the issue. If you have Visual Studio installed, you may have a Rust compiler without even being aware of it, but we can go and just grab our own Rust compiler. Let's go and do Rust compiler, Rust programming language, and if we want to install, and we'll do 64-bit, download that. We'll say open, do, 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 quick install. So this is going to do it via the community installer for Visual Studio. I'm going to use that. Uh, just to make things easier, so we'll hit one. It's going to download that Visual Studio installer, which again, if you already have it and pip install transformers works for you, it don't, it's not a problem, just I've found that often people hit that error message and get very confused. And we'll let this go and install.
So we'll take all of this and let it install. Don't actually need to start after installation though. So after the initial Visual Studio installation, we need to proceed with the Rust compiler installation. And we'll do one right here. We'll press enter to continue, close that. And now we're going to launch the command prompt again. And we'll do pip install transformers. That was successful, and so we'll move. So technically we can run this full command. We can, we'll copy, we can pull transformers from there because we don't need it. But this will give us all the other prereqs that we need. All right, we now have all of our prereqs for Python installed. Now we need to go and grab the build sum dataset can do it just with a curl command, but let's create a new directory where we want to do that. Let's make a new directory, and we'll go into, and now we'll run the curl command to download. There we go, and there we are, we have our CSV. And if you want to look at it quick, Yes, this is what it looks like in kind of its raw form. Let's go. Now we need to retrieve our key and endpoint from our Azure resource, and we want to encode those into environment variables. So let's grab our endpoint, and we'll say copy. And from here, we can go and cr start creating environment variables. I'm going to open up Notepad just to make this easy for me. And so this is the endpoint. environment variable for my key. I can copy either of these keys. The reason there's always two keys is just it allows a secure key rotation. Also, for this example, we're using environment variables, which provides kind of the very bare minimum level of protection of you not shooting yourself in the foot and accidentally uploading your credentials. It's still essentially both in your registry and on your machine in plain text has those values we would certainly recommend for any sort of production use case or even in your own environment you want to start using azure key vault just for the simplicity of these examples we're going to use environment variables to start out so we will run this command in our command prompt and we will run this command in our command prompt and we now have those set Okay, now we will go and launch Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebooks, depending on what you're using. And I'm going to go to the directory I created before. And we'll launch it from there just so we have local context for everything. We'll say Jupyter Lab. Minimize this. We'll create a new notebook. We'll leave it untitled for now. So right here, we can copy, we'll paste this in. 
So you can see we're using our environment variables that we created previously. The version of the API is the new API that just came out in December. And we're calling the REST API to check deployment. So what this is really doing is saying, what are all the models that are deployed for API using the December API? And we'll run that. We will get an error message, but it's one we can ignore. So what it's saying here is that because uh, transformers technically normally expect you to have PyTorch, TensorFlow, or Flax, it's just kind of alerting you that, hey, you're importing the transformers library, but the only thing you're going to have access to is tokenization and the tokenizer. That's all we need, uh, so that's fine for us. And certainly if you have PyTorch or TensorFlow or Flax already installed, then you're not going to see this error message. But just so you know, you, if you've just only added the Rust compiler to be able to pip install tokenizer, that's okay, it's gonna work for what we need in this case. But in the future, you may find you need to add PyTorch, TensorFlow, or Flax. And so here we have TechSearch Query Docs 001, we have TechSearch Query Query 001, and you can see it's going to, the example based on the docs, it's going to be all the models you have. So if this is a resource that already existed, you've already deployed some models, that's fine. It's just at a bare minimum to complete this tutorial, we need these two. Now we can go on. So the first thing we're going to do is using the pandas library, we're going to take our sample bill sum data that we downloaded locally before, and we're going to bring it into a data frame with pandas. So we'll copy this just to make it easy to get the formatting right. And I'll paste that here. We'll delete the end of that. So in our case, it's an OpenAI test at the root of C, and then we'll go and bring back that data frame so we can look at it. This is what we have here. We don't actually need all of these columns. So what we do in the next step is we go and slim this down to all we want is the text, the summary, and the title. So we'll run this next. And so we're creating a new data frame called DF Bills that's based on the initial DF data frame, but this will just have text, summary, title, and then we're calling this to look at it. Technically, you don't have to, these are at every step during this tutorial, I have you calling and looking at the data frame again. You don't need to do that. I just like to visually have that confirmation that what I thought was going to happen actually happened. There we go. So we now have just three columns, but we still have from index zero up to 19 of different bills. Keep going in our tutorial. And so right now you can look, you see some new lines here. We've got some punctuation. So before we can tokenize this, it can be really helpful to go and pull that out. And so we'll copy this here. And we're just going to take our DF bills text and we're going to do a little bit of normalization and clean up on it. So we are getting this error. You can ignore this error. It's just that we're doing this directly on DF bills rather than kind of creating an intermediate copy as we did initially with DF and then creating DF bills. You could certainly do that if you want to, but it's not required. And then if you wanted to go and double check and see, we could go and say DF bills again. And so right here, you see these new lines. Run this again, new lines are gone. Um, any of the things that we cleaned up in the text column are now gone. Now we need to go and tokenize all of this. This is, gets a little bit confusing, and so this is where we're using the Hugging Face tokenizer library. We're using their GPT-2 tokenizer. We're limiting to nothing above 2,000, so we're gonna throw out any of these that would have ended up with 2,000 tokens. It's going to throw a message and say that GPT-2 can't handle 2,000 tokens. That's fine in our case in that we just need to create the tokens, but then for any of the actual embedding and search, we're going to be using GPT-3 models that can handle up to 2,000 tokens. But just to explain the discrepancy that you guys see there. And you can see we're doing a length call on DF bills. The reason we're doing that is just that, so previously we had 19 rows of data now we are down to 12 rows of data. If you want to look at that, just to understand a little bit more clearly, we will examine that data frame again. 
And so the original indexes remain, but you can see we're no longer, we're skipping. So three is gone, um, seven is gone. And so anything that would have been over 2000 in the end tokens column, we've just dropped because it's not going to work with our later steps. To understand this end tokens column a little bit better, I find it can be nice to just take a look at what what that process of tokenizing with GPT-2 looks like. We're going to just, I'm going to just do a basic tokenization of just this index zero column, just so you can see um, what that looks like. Okay, so this is how we're breaking everything up. And this is also why we did the data normalization and remove some of the new lines and other things so we don't end up with excess tokens that we don't want. So there's all our tokens there that represent that first column. And if we go and take the length of that, we get 1480. And if you remember, we're all the way back up here. 1480 is end tokens for index zero. So now that we've gone and we understand a little bit more about the tokenization process, now we need to do the initial embedding. So we'll copy this here and paste it in. You can see in this case, we're using the text search Curie doc 001 model. And so we will go and apply that. Again, we're gonna get an error message. It will be a little unhappy with us because we're doing this directly on DF bills. We're not creating any new intermediate data frame uh, to take this, but just so you understand what's happening. So there's that error as predicted you can we can shut these off if you want to we will go and look at df bills really quick just so you can see that new curious search column there we are and we talk a little bit in the doc about how the search method that we're ultimately using is ranking things by cosine similarity we have a secondary article that talks a little bit more about this um, some of the advantages of it how we use it but we can close that and go back here. So now that we have the initial embeddings, we're going to go and do our query. Paste that in. So you can see here, we're using a different model than before. Now we're using the query based model. We're going to be using cosine similarity and we're asking it the question, can I get information on cable company tax revenue top four? So we wanna return the top four bills from this bill sum data set that can potentially answer this question based on cosine similarity. Again, our favorite error from before. And you see we're getting four results ranked by similarity. And if we want to dig into the top result, we can just index in this way. And you can see that this is the top result is returning based on that. So this is just a quick walkthrough of kind of all the steps that you would have in this tutorial. I think it can be useful sometimes to be able to see someone go through the steps. Sometimes there are those gotchas, like you want to install the Transformers library, but you don't want to install PyTorch yet. How do you do that? What does that process look like? If you have any questions, feel free to drop me um, a message on Twitter and I'll try to get back to you. Thank you so much.